Well, here we are at last. We've got the Toshiba completely disassembled. Screws all over the place, hopefully organized. And we have the motherboard removed from the chassis. Took the time to clean out the fan. And we've got the heat pipe going to the heat sink in the P6200 Pentium that we're going to remove and put in our Core i5 450M. So, I think now I'm going to switch bits to a flathead. Go ahead and, no, oh, maybe I'm not. Ha, all right. They are labeled one, two, three, four. They'd like you to take them off crosswise and put them back on crosswise, just like the lugs on a car. All right, three and four. We'll get that off. Unplug the fan, and we can see, still have a little bit of uh, thermal paste on there, which I'll clean off and swap out the CPU. So the locking mechanism on these little sockets is just like that. It's just a little flathead type screw. And there's our P6200. Here's our brand new i5-450M. And there we are, and this is what we're gonna put in. Line up your arrow, and this is the one I got off eBay. No bent pins, fits snugly. And lock it back into place, like such. And that's essentially it as far as swapping the CPU. Now, I'm not going to lie and say that that was easy getting to this thing. Um, I didn't really keep a good count, but I think I'm close to 30 odd screws. Um, and these little, and the ribbon cables and the clips for the ribbon cables that I had to take off. And God help me, I have everything that I took off this thing and then I can find it and it's not a problem because I don't want to face not having everything or having a, an extra screw or being missing a screw or uh, stripping a screw out trying to put it together. Um, that's almost just as bad. So um, everything looks good. I'll get this cleaned off, get some paste on that CPU, reassemble, and plug it in and cross my fingers and pray to God. So, then we'll do some benchmarking with um, Cinebench and um, we'll check out the, uh, check out the CPU ID, CPU-Z. So I wouldn't mind a little input from the audience on this. Um, you know we've got the uh, ribbon cables that need to be reconnected on the motherboard and these little clips sometimes break because sometimes we have huge fingernails or toothpicks that we try and open these clips up with. So what I'm doing is I've got the ribbon cable in there, I've got the clip in place, and just a little dab of hot glue. Just a tiny dab of hot glue to hold everything down. Um, I'd hate for it to open up while I'm putting it together, or slip out, or not be a tight connection. And... Um, this is pretty much the ultimate upgrade for this laptop. So um, leave, a, leave a comment in the section as to what do you think about doing this with a little bit of hot glue. Uh, it kind of makes it look like a, cheap, uh, <laughs> like a cheap piece of throwaway electronics with all the hot glue inside. But um, I think it serves a purpose. Tell me what you think. And here we're taking a look at CPU-Z on our dual core Pentium 6200, uh, the socket 989. And it's a 2.13 gigahertz, two core, two threads. 
and it's an Intel motherboard, PCI Express 1.0, uh, DDR3 RAM, 4 gig, and we'll just run through the various specs on CPU-Z. It's got the uh, built-in chip graphics, and then we did bench the dual-core CPU by itself, and then we referenced it again uh, against a desktop uh, Core 2 Duo 8500, and then just for fun, threw in uh, an older AMD CPU, uh, two core, four threads. And as we can see, our processor is fairly weak. We'll go ahead and run Cinebench. And it's going to take a little while to spool up. And then it's going to take a little while to run. And then we'll get our score at the end and comment on it. A little mood music while we run through and this is at 999% speed. And here's our score for the uh, two-core, two-thread Pentium P60 200 CPU, and we've got a score of 470. And I don't know if I've ever seen a score that low before on a full run of Cinebench. And it took uh, it took well over a half hour. So let's go ahead and run with the uh, Core i5. All right, let's check CPU-Z for the uh, Core i5. We've got the uh, two cores, four threads, and that's a 2.4 gigahertz. Nice, on the socket 989. So that's all working well. And we'll run straight to the benchmark. So we'll go ahead and check out this CPU versus a couple of reference CPUs. And it's not all that much powerful than the uh, essentially Core 2 Duo was, the mobile Core 2 Duo. And 
And let's see, we'll reference it against, well, first against a desktop Core 2 Duo at a higher clock speed at 3.16 gig, whereas we're running at 2.4 on a mobile core. And as you can see, actually, the Core 2 Duo beats this one. And then against that AMD uh, two core four thread, that also a mobile chip, and that has uh, built-in graphics on that one. Same as this one. And then we'll check it uh, one last time, uh, maybe against an older uh, Core uh, Core i, uh, maybe with the Core i seven that's in here as a reference. Okay, so it's a Core i five seventy six hundred, and that's four core four thread. And again, that chip is a lot faster than ours. But again, you're talking desktop chips versus mobile. All right, we'll get Cinebench started with our Core i5-450M. Uh, two core, four thread. Again, running at 999% speed. All right, and we'll wrap up our Cinebench with checking our scores here. And this will be the Core i5-450M versus the dual-core P6200. And it's looking like a 773 versus a 470. So a little less than double the speed, maybe an 80% speed gain. Um, and that's about what it is in the time that it took to complete the test also. So I'd say a decent upgrade. I'd say well worth the time and effort put into it. And um, it feels like a usable laptop. Let me know what you guys think in the comments.